This weekend and some weekdays and another weekend project was the Backsplash. Stay tuned and I'll be sharing some of the tips and tricks and the tools I used. Almost every coat was done with this tile saw and I used a tile saw because, well, my dad already had one and he let me borrow it. Now, would I have gone out and bought one if I didn't have that? Uh, you kind of have to weigh out the options of how big their project is and if it's worth actually investing in one of these saws versus just a tile cutter that scores it and breaks it. Instead of going with your traditional mortar mix that I swear it takes me forever to get the correct consistency, I got Omni Grip. It's a pre-made adhesive that you just pop the top and trowel it on. Trowel it. Trowel it on. That's going to be a fun one throughout the video. Take note of the back panel, or it is online, for your correct trowel size and coverage. In case you care, I had about 80 square feet, and I went through exactly two gallons of it. There were a couple spots where I tried using spacers, but for the most part, as soon as I threw it up, a little adjustment was all it needed. If you go with a mosaic tile, make sure you have a straight edge or a level on hand, and that way you'll get every tile perfectly flush with each other. Straight cut obstacles, like all the outlets, weren't too bad to go around because, well, you could still use the saw. Now, if you got a pipe or tubing coming out of the wall, that's kind of a different story. The easiest thing would be to get a tile hole saw. And, well, if you don't have one, then you can use a pair of nippers. These can kind of cut the tile at an angle. And I did have one rounded piece that my dad wanted to show off his skills and made a beautiful round cut with the tile saw. Keep in mind, my dad is a professional DIYer, so you might want to get comfortable with the saw before you try some close cuts like this. You may have noticed that we did not go all the way up the wall with the tile, uh, mostly because of cost. It would have doubled our cost, and I actually like how it turned out, so I'm kind of glad we didn't do it. To finish the top edge, we used what was called a tile trim edge. Uh, it's found at all the big box stores or tile stores. We ended up picking a chamfered brushed nickel one that matched uh, really well with the tile. Now that we're halfway through the video, I guess it's a good time to talk about the tile that we used. It's a mosaic tile. I'm sure you've heard that word quite a bit if you didn't know what that was. Mosaic means that it's any shape or size tile that's uh, com a combination of it put together on a sheet so for ease of installation. As you can imagine, if you had to hand place every one of those one by two tiles, that would take an extremely long time and a lot of spacers and no one would do it. So it is worth the extra little cost if you're doing a lot of little pieces. Something I couldn't really show but I want you to take note is for multiple cut pieces like around the outlets and below this window is the more that these sheets are in the water the less sticky they are. So you got to make quick work of it to make your cuts quick and dry it off so that you don't lose all of your pieces and have to hand place all of them. I'm not going to try and help you pick out which tile you should use, but we ended up using a Bergamo herringbone. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's exactly how you say it. From the good old Home Depot, we got eight cases of it in total. After letting it dry a couple days, it was time for grout. Now, with these small of tiles, um, I tried a couple different techniques with the float, whether going zigzag back and forth, up and down at an angle, just completely sideways and up and down and I don't know if I really came to a conclusion of which way worked best but that's why I allow comments on my videos because I am sure there is some expert out there that knows the perfect technique of how to do small mosaic herringbone tiles for a backsplash. You'll see that I'm working in small sections. I'm only doing about a three foot by three foot section and then I'm wiping it off or sponging it off. You don't wanna let it sit too long or else it's that much harder to wipe off. So work in small sections, really easy to clean up that way. 
And I would also highly suggest getting the pre-mixed grout. Just like with the mortar mix, they sell pre-mixed uh, and you can get it in lots of different colors. We got a simply white, no, uh, bright white, bright white. That's what it is. Uh, I used two gallons and came right to this point and then I had to go out and buy a little quart. So, yep, they smell them. They smell them. Yep. They sell them in smaller sizes as well, which was nice that I didn't have to buy a full another gallon to finish it off. After numerous sponge baths, this project was finally done and in the books. I needed to button up a couple little things, outlet covers, and of course, can't forget the good old pot filler. So we'll end with a couple still shots and call it good. Thanks for watching guys, and we will see you next time.